We are going to move along into our deep dive for this month. Uh, and as a reminder there, we'll have time at the end of this for Q&A. So along the way, if you have any questions or anything, uh, please let me know. And I can uh, and I can ask them along the way or at the end. So our our deep dive again, as I've if you've been here before, as I as I kind of explained earlier, this is a way to go deeper on a particular topic of interest. Because rather than trying to tackle this and everything else when we're together in person, it allows us to spend more time on a topic without overloading you. Um, our deep dive this month is titled "Public Image Is Everything." So what does that mean? Well. Throughout the year, you may have heard us talk about the importance of public image in Rotary. If we look at Rotary as a business, our product is service or the impact we make on the people and world around us. We maximize that impact through two ways, action and money. The more people we have involved in our service, the more impact we can have. It's as easy as that. And the more money we raise, that means the more grants and projects we can do, which also increases our impact. So that's why membership in the foundation are so important. When we engage our current members and attract new members, we're increasing the amount of people doing service as Rotarians and with Rotarians. And the more we raise through the foundation, again, the greater the impact. So where does public image fit? We're the storytellers. Public image is the key to people developing an understanding of who we are and then creating an emotional response so they want to be involved, giving their time, energy, expertise, and money to help make the impact we can as Rotarians. So that's the impact of public image. And public image is a very specific phrase here. It's not marketing or public relations, but it's public image. Well, they're all pretty similar. There are some differences. I looked up the definitions uh, a couple days ago, and, and marketing can be defined as the action or business of promoting and selling products or services. So if we're simply trying to promote ourselves to the public, that'd be marketing, but it's more than that. And then you have public relations, which is the maintenance of a favorable public image by a company or other organization. So that's really telling the public what we want them to think of us, which is part of it, but it isn't the full picture either. Public image is the way a person, group, or organization appears to other people. So I think that means that marketing and public relations are part of public image as our concepts like branding and our brand, which can be a demonstration of the core values and principles we have and how they're expressed. But with, when you look further, public image, because it's how it appears to people, we can look at that as both external, the public, and internal. It's not only considering the way that the general public looks at us, but how we appear to our own members. So if public image is that broader term that's all encompassing and creating our image as seen by everyone, doesn't public image need to be a part of everything we do in Rotary then? We need to constantly think about how we are creating a good image so people remember us and develop and then maintain an emotional relationship with us because then, like I said earlier, we can create, we can increase our impact. So today we're gonna to talk about how public image is everything. Our team members will explain how each area we talk about is important to consider when creating a good experience and perception of us as Rotarians, share some tips to consider to make sure you're creating an appealing environment, and then share a couple good and bad examples they've seen over time, of course, not sharing any specific club names or anything with any of the bad examples. As a reminder, once again, text me if, or message me if you have any questions and, and we'll go from there. So we're gonna start with Patrick and, uh, and talk about the vibe of a club overall. So Patrick, why is the vibe of a club? Well, what is it? Why is it important? And why is it important when creating a good perception of a club? Vibe is everything. And we all know that, right? And what's great about a vibe is, let's say there's members of your club that don't know Facebook, don't know media, don't know how to fix certain specific things with public image. Every single member of a Rotary Club can work on the vibe of a club. You know, you only get one impression in today's world, especially people that we want to be members of Rotary. And so when you walk into a Rotary Club, we've all done it. 
we know immediately, we can tell within a couple of minutes, sometimes even seconds, if this is going to be a fun vibe, if this is going to be a connective vibe, or this is going to be a get me out of here vibe. I think we've probably all experienced a little bit of both. Uh, and, and I want to in, in, implore and really encourage every single person on this call and that's listening to this, take some time next time you go to your Rotary Club. Go as a guest. Ask yourself, right when you walk in, is this friendly? Is this engaging? Is this a welcoming environment? Or are there some things that we can improve to make sure that all the guests that are coming in feel that great vibe? You know, Public image, you could be the best public image rock star. You could have all this campaign, best social media, best media presence. But if you're not delivering what you're selling, there's no point, right? So we want to make sure that vibe is just incredible. It's a vibe that you never want to leave. You want to come back for more and more and more. And it's pretty easy to create. Absolutely. And, 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 uh, and that's what we'll talk about in just a second here too. And without getting into that meeting, you know, the location, food, speakers, because Gretchen will talk about that. But if we want to have that good vibe going, if we want to create that good vibe that people want to be a part of us, what are some things a club or a district should consider to ensure it's appealing to its members and to the public? Well, first of all, you want to make sure the second you walk in, there's someone greeting you. There's someone with a happy smile, someone that's connective and having a great, great day. You don't want to put someone, we always have the moody people in our club. You don't want to put them as a greeter, but you want to make sure that at the second someone walks in, no matter if they're a new member or someone that's been in your club for 30 years, because you never know someone might be having a bad day. They need that pick me up. So you always want to have someone greet you. Then when you walk in, I think this is something that a lot of Rotary Club's don't think is important, but to me, it's everything. If I walk into a club and I, I see a 1980s banner and the badges look like they haven't been dusted since 1976 and, you know, I'm immediately going, wow, okay, I'm walking into something interesting. Whereas if I walk into a, a, a club that the members are excited and they're wearing their badges proud and everything looks really beautiful and the and all the branding is master branded, which I do think is important, uh, I'm going to go, okay, this club takes pride in what they do. Now, if you're listening to this and you're like, what do you mean? I still have the old badges. I'm not trying to say that your club doesn't take pride, but these are some things that innovators in our community look for when they walk in. That's that's part of their vibe is seeing what does it look like? What does it feel like? And I also think we all know the members that might be in a bad mood for the last 10 years or 20 years. We might want to encourage them to either pep it up and really try to help them, encourage them to be kind, or maybe put them in a certain part of the club so they're not interacting with the new members. Because, you know, we're going to next, we're going to talk about our bad examples. I do have a bad example uh, that. I'll never forget. And it literally, I'll just go right into it. Yeah, literally, let's go walked, right to it here. Yeah, let's go right to it. <laughs> I walked in and I was the speaker that day and I sat in a chair and a guy came over to me. And he said, get out of my seat. And he said it real blunt. And I'm, you know, I'm a New Yorker. So I was like, oh, are we going to go toe to toe here? And I looked up at him and said, are you kidding me? And he goes, you're in my seat. You need to get out. So I went straight up to the president. And I said, if I wasn't a guest here today, I would first of all, leave. But second of all, never come back to your club. You have a culture problem in your club. And he took that to heart and they fixed it. They, they've worked on it because I've been back and it's actually really cool. I've also been to other clubs, including my own. My own club does a five minute of connection before every uh, program begins. That's on Zoom or in person. And what we found the feedback is guests feel immediately connected to, so they go into little small groups and the guests feel uh, immediately connected to the members even before the program begins. And they always come back for more. And we've also been to clubs where it's like the church, you know, where you get up and you shake hands with everybody. Everybody gets up and they say, hey, how are you? And they take a couple minutes to say hi to every single person in the room. And it's a big club. And so we all know those clubs that we wish we were members of, you know, those clubs that are not your own club. You're like, oh, man. I would love to come back here more and more and more. As long as you focus on inspiration, as long as you focus on value for your time, and as long as you focus on a vibe that is welcoming and is positive, I, we can guarantee you, not only your members are going to come back for more, but it's going to spread around the community and people are going to show up for it. Absolutely. And I think you said something good there. It, 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 walking into your club every now and again saying, what would a guest see here? Yep. You, you know, and, and if it's the... If it's the inside jokes or even just a, uh, um, 
it's good every now and again. Well, how many times does a president of the club, when they start the meeting, introduce themselves uh, so that so that people know who they are, or um, or just hey, you know, this is the time, especially if you're having a special meeting or something. This is the time where we do this, which is you know, and explain it so people aren't going what in the world is going on right now? Um, I think all those things help create that vibe and make people feel more comfortable. So That's thanks for sharing questions. those. Go for yeah, it. Don't, don't just go to be a guest, just to be a guest. Ask those tough questions we just talked about. Mm -hmm. And I promise you, you're going to have a transformation. Absolutely. Thanks, Patrick. Yep. So now let's talk a little bit more about some of those specifics in the meeting. The content, the location, the atmosphere, food, speakers, you know, all of that stuff in seven minutes. Um, here to share some thoughts is Gretchen Noman, um, one of our assistants in, in Iowa. Gretchen, why is having an engaging meeting, uh, factoring in all those details I just mentioned, why is that important to the image a club has and the perception it creates? It's all about the experience, kind of what Patrick said about you want to have um, your current Rotarians, but, you know, future guests, you know, have that experience and have that memory, memory stuck with them of why they were at that club, what made them come, you know, whether it's you have your meeting at the same location all the time, um, or you have a different spot, maybe every other meeting, you know, to have a fun social or something that's engaging those members, keeping them coming back every single time. Um, and as we all know, food gets people to come, drinks get people to come, you know, knowing what your club members want um, for a meeting, what's going to make them, you know, really want to come. Um, and then just the content speakers. I mean, you don't want a speaker that's going to be boring, reads right off the slides, has no interaction with your, you know, Rotarians and your guests there. Um, make sure that you have a Q&A session for them. Make sure that you're keeping track of the time for the speaker. Um, you know, I've sat through plenty of times that the speakers, um, you know, read right off the slides. They don't adhere to the time limit. You know, make sure that your speaker in advance knows what their time limits are. And is the speaker content what your club members want, you know, and, Make sure that maybe it's not just your club members, but open up to the public, because obviously then your public's going to know what your Rotary Club is wanting to promote around your community. Sure. And, 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 and with that, the, the speaker thing, um, be respectful of the speaker too. get them on at the time you say you're going to get them on and give them the time you said you were going to give them as well. I remember being at a, uh, being at a meeting one time and asked, and I was speaking and kind of said, Hey, uh, so when am I going to get on? Because I need about somewhere between 25 and 30 minutes. Yep, plenty of time. We're just going to be done right at 830. Uh, but yeah, shouldn't be a problem. And I'm looking at my watch and all of a sudden the president is still having breakfast at 750 and then 755. And all of a sudden finally starts the meeting at 759 and they go into the business part of things. And I'm like, yeah, well, now I have to rush through what I put together here. And, and that's, you know, so it goes both ways, but having that engaging meeting is great. So what are some suggestions you'd have for people so their meetings can be as engaging as possible? So everybody, not just guests, but the members come away with a good feeling, good perception of the, uh, of the meeting and of the club. Yep. So it kind of goes back to one of the points that I touched on earlier on the on the 10 uh, PR points was empower. Empower your club members to help you come up with your programs and who you want to have come speak and where the location is, whether that is you come up with a program committee or you just have a few select individuals that, you know, get selected every single month. You have a whole plan for your year of who's going to be in charge of this month's, you know, weekly speaker um, and location. Um, another thing is, is making sure that, um, you know, everybody is thanked. So it goes to Patrick's, you know, point of um, making sure everybody feels welcome, you know, when they get there to the meeting, but also when they're leaving and, you know, take that time and make sure that you're sending out the thank you to the speaker, but, you know, people that helped you specifically um, within your club, or maybe it was a, you know, a guest from, you know, the audience that helped you with something. So that way that they know um, that they're, they're appreciated and, you know, that they want to help out. Sure. Yeah, that, that all makes, uh, I think that makes really good sense. And I, and I like the asking other people to, you know, to take part in making the meeting experience as, as good as possible. And I think it, it helps too to get as many people involved in the meeting because then there's more people involved and the energy is going to be higher too. So uh, what is in your uh, experience, 
I mean, I know we could share stories for several hours among the group of about 40 of us about good experiences and bad experiences at Rotary meetings we've seen. But Gretchen, what's an example or two you've seen that either clubs could em- emulate or stay away from? I mean, emulate to where they, they could follow with is, is really that whole empowering thing, making sure that you get your club members involved. And that's meaning taking the time, asking what they want to hear, um, you know, and, and having them select those topics and have them introduce that speaker, you know, get that speaker or get that program. Um, you know, make sure that they're just a part of it. That's a that's a huge thing that um, that I know in my own club. I've really tried to to make sure that it's done and is passed on. Um, and the thing to stay away from is if you don't get people involved or if you have that boring speaker. I've sat through one here about two weeks ago that it was it was pretty boring, and he talked for forty five minutes. And I think by the end, we all don't even remember what he spoke about. Um, you know, and you don't want that to happen by no means. So just make sure that you know it's truly something that is going to be um, beneficial to the people that are there in attendance to speak and listen to. Absolutely. Hey, side note, before I add on, it was good to see you two weeks ago at your club meeting when I spoke at the, I'm just kidding. That wasn't <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> yeah. And I think one other thing there would be, you talk about getting other people involved and, and, you know, I've seen clubs where the president stands up there, calls a meeting to order, does the, does the reflection, makes every announcement, this, that, and the other thing, nobody else talks in the meeting. Um, you know, it's just human nature that you kind of lose focus on that person. Have the, you know, if you're doing highway cleanup, have that community service person make that announcement. Or if you're doing something to, to encourage donations, to the Rotary Foundation, have a foundation chair, have different people coming up to make those announcements just to keep, to break the flow and to keep things moving there as well. Absolutely. Yep. Thanks, Gretchen. Um, yep. Let's talk. Uh, so, Another way we can talk for hours here. Let's talk about the web presence and visual identity of a club. And here we're we're actually going to have our two two of our website and just web experts, Sean Barry and Hunter Byington, both talking to us here because frankly, when I put this together, I couldn't slight one for the other. So Sean, we'll start with you. If people we if we want to give people a good per, or we want people to have a good perception of us. Why is our web presence so important? When potential members overhear a conversation, see a sign or a, potent, or a promotional bent, banner, or see an interesting event and so on, the first thing they do is grab their phone and they search for your club. Most of us and potential members have one with them at all times. We want to make sure you have a presence on the inter- internet with their website and social media. The bare minimum a club should have is a landing page for the public to learn about your club. The page should include pictures of your activities since most people like visuals, but not pictures of you sitting around a table eating or drinking. A brief description of your club and what you do for your community and around the world. A calendar with current events and social activities and a join us form. Yeah, I think those are all good ideas. And it's certainly something that we want people to be able to learn about us. And, and the way we all work at this point is we check it out online first. And I don't know how many times I've gone to visit other Rotary clubs if I'm traveling and I make the decision somewhat on <laughs> which one has the most up-to-date website because that's probably going to be the most engaging club. So Hunter, going along with Sean's comments, why is it important to then have a consistent messaging and brand working in lockstep with a up-to-date web presence? Well, the I'll go back to a story real quick of something we just did with uh, several clubs, <clears throat> in particular in 6440 and also uh, in your district. Um, we found that the clubs did marketing. They drove, they put the word out. They got people to show up uh, at their website. An interesting thing, we had 200 people that we sent to their website. Uh, but the sad thing, the surprising thing, was by not having a, a up-to-date web presence, not having some of the things that Sean just hit upon, we had 200 people, unique visitors, And not a single one of them said they wanted to come to lunch and see us. 
I'll, you want to know how important a web presence is? You've got to not only think about our, our old guard that, that we all make fun of, who we know we've got, but it's the young guard that we're trying to get to join us as well. And those folks have got to see what Sean was talking about, a calendar that looks like something action-oriented is happening, <clears throat> projects on there, things that they need to know about that they can come join and talk to us about. The other thing is, is, is just the pictures, talking about that web presence there as well. Uh, a lot of people have what I call uh, family pictures. You know, everybody lined up for, in a row and almost stair-stepped, and those are the pictures that people see. We've got to do better than that. We shouldn't be doing family selfies, uh, but rather we should do pictures that show our clubs in action. Uh, even if it's given scholarships, get up there and congratulating and handing them something and, and talking about it and looking like they're engaged. So web presence is very important, not only on your website, but it also works for Facebook. Put the same thing on Facebook, on website, and then finally, of course, uh, Instagram. Those are the three that people are looking at, and you need to be very solid in what you look like to the community. Absolutely. And I think you just answered my next question, which is what is it? What are a couple of things you suggest Rotarians think about? So I'll have Sean answer that as well. So Sean, add on to Hunter there. And uh, what else uh, would you recommend people think about? You have to think as a potential member. When, you, when they find you online, make sure your presence is, is engaging and current, meaning keep your site up to date with this year's events meetings and activities. Verifying all pages on your site have current and consistent branding. You can write a synopsis of the past presentations and have provide a photo that was taken at the meeting. Or for future meetings, have a bio and a photo of your upcoming presenters. And try to engage potential members to come check you out. You must keep your site fresh. If you don't have a web person in your club, Search your community for web designers, developers, or PR firms and ask them to join your club. Absolutely. Absolutely. Thanks. Um, and lastly, and again, I'm sure you guys can give plenty of examples on this, but what are some good and bad examples you've seen? And more importantly, what are a couple easy suggestions people could implement right away? Sean? Being the District 5960 Public Image Lead, I've had the opportunity to go through all of our club's websites, social media, and, and event media. And I've seen a bunch of rights and some wrongs. The wrongs I've seen have been old rotary themes, two or three years old, to clubs creating non-compliant logos, modifying the rotary master band. But I've also seen many clubs embrace my ask to update their materials to the current branding. It's not the new branding anymore. The current branding came out over nine years ago. As stated earlier, we want to make sure all of your promotional materials, including your website, your social media, print media, and signage have proper current branding. Consist consistency helps people remember your club and our organization. If you need help updating your logos on your website, there's a video on the, public, the zone public image for a club runner. If you still can't figure it out, ask us, we will help you. Absolutely. And, and we're not there to just be, you know, the Gestapo. We're there to help. And because we want, we want you to be able to understand what's, what's good and bad. So no, nobody else says, Hey, you got this wrong. Hunter, what's a, what's a good example you've seen and a bad example you've seen quick. I don't know if I have good or bad, but just two or three things to follow up on Sean. Um, one is, he looked at all the websites. I, I want to first pray for him. Um, I'm not sure how that worked on his mental psyche, but when we did that with ours, I wanted to throw something at the TV. It was just really sad. But here's a couple of things I picked up. One, how many websites have an action button? They have a person, a place to click, a call to action for two things. One is, hey, I'd like to come have lunch with you. 
when you look at some of these websites, you wouldn't even know they, they got together, that they wanted to see people from the community. In fact, you'd never know it. That's number one, an act call to action button. Two, a call to action for membership. Join us, which leads to number three. What Sean was talking about is laying the foundation. A lot of these uh, folks who play with their website, I don't know what tree they're in, but there really should be a, uh, think of the website looking like a newspaper. It's got banner headlines. It says, hey, we just gave a, $10,000 to, to somebody. You know, we did something that was important for our community with our high school kids. None of that stuff is up there. You have to dig to find it. And, and you're going, huh? So going starting from the beginning, tying this together, Patrick pointed out, what's the vibe? What do you see when you walk in? Well, what do you want to see when you walk in is reflected in the pictures on the website. And by the way, how many people listening have a YouTube channel? You know, it's not difficult to pick up that iPhone when you're doing anything and take a video and put it up there. It belongs both on Facebook and your, uh, your um, uh, website. Perfect. I, I couldn't come up the negative, but I can come up with some things you ought to get doing as soon as we get off That's here. all right. That's all right. And I think uh, we could have taken that seven minutes and broadened it out into an hour or two session that goes deeper. Maybe we'll do that at some point on the do's and don'ts <laughs> of online presence, but uh, we'll move on for now just because. And, uh, um, you know, we've talked about our meetings, our online presence, our vibe. Now let's start talking about some of our other activities and how they can affect the perception our members and the public have of us. We'll start with one of the tent poles, the projects that we do in our clubs. And uh, Gretchen, how do, how do the projects we conduct in our clubs affect the way people look at us? Well, if you don't promote your project, they'll never know about your club. That's a that's, big pointer. That's a big one. Um, but no, when you're promoting your pr project, I mean, you're pretty much telling your story of Rotary, what your club specifically wants to support, or there's a certain cause like in polio, um, whatever it might be that you want to make sure that, that the public knows and your community knows and the world knows that you're doing. Um, so really promoting your projects. I mean, it shows, again, like I said, what your club's all about, showing that you care, what the causes are, what you want to support. Um, in that area. So then you have more followers, more people that want to become Rotarians just like you. I mean, it's, it's so huge, huge, huge. Um, you know, I mean, when I joined Rotary six years ago, I joined a club that um, was always known as the check writers. They would just write a check because they never did the PR side of it. And I, I think I've really changed that side of it personally, making sure that that's the number one thing that we talk about with our people in our community is what projects that we do and really try to promote that out. And it's probably the number one thing that we tell our members, you know, and potential members, you know, that we want them to be a part of what we're trying to promote and, and get ideas from them. And so then it goes back to the empowering them and, and keeping them involved as well. Absolutely. And it's a good way to create new partnerships, too, with uh, the more projects we can do and bringing in other people to uh, understand what we are. So, yeah, those are all good thoughts. So if we want to do bigger projects that involve the Rotary Foundation, we obviously need member contributions to maximize those. How does the type of project and engaging our members fit in with creating donations to the Rotary Foundation? Well, I know um, I'm still kind of new to this, so I'm just going to be honest. You can always uh, add on Kyle as this or anybody else on this. And, and but, the um, disclaimer for Gretchen on that one, this <laughs> is Scott's question originally, so she <laughs> had about an hour to prep this this afternoon. So. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. And I'm still learning in the years of donating to the foundation what it all really means. Um, but but to me, what it means, um, you know, being able to donate to the foundation is how you get your grant money um, for you locally, but as well as doing your international projects. If you want to partner with five or six other Rotary clubs and donate to something so huge, um, you know, example, you know, the Ukraine efforts. I mean, I know our district, 6,000 got to go in and do a lot of different things because we had other clubs within our district wanting to support that aspect of it. So the more that you can talk about different projects and the more that your members can donate to the foundation, the more that you're able to give back uh, within your community, but also worldwide. Yeah. And I think, it, like you said, it's telling the story too, where we're, the more we can tell the story of, hey, because of your donation, 
we're able to make this impact on people, that's going to make people more apt to give. And the other thing is to ask what kind of projects they're, uh, they're interested in. What, what kind of projects do they want to do? So then they're going to be more willing to be involved and to donate their time, energy, and money to those projects, whether it's a foundation project or not. So absolutely. Um, lastly, Give a, a couple examples on how projects have created a either positive or negative view of the club that you can think of. Well, um, you know, I guess we'll start with the bad. You know, if you're not going to promote it, it's going to flop. You know, your project's not going to be good or it's not going to be known, um, you know, or if you don't get enough people involved in it and you just want to, and that's not just people within your club, but if you want to try to partner with somebody within your community, um, and, and with that project, and if you don't get them involved and you just say, well, we're doing it this way, you know, that can be a truly a, a negative impact on it. Positively, you know, flipping that negative over is, you know, empower and make sure that your members are all involved in that project um, from the top to the bottom, uh, making sure that if you do partner with somebody that that partner is included in and that everybody agrees across the table of how that project is going to go, where the money is going to, how you're going to tell the story, um, you know, what's the big overall picture and, and who does it all um, benefit overall to make sure that you're telling it correctly. Absolutely. I love, I love that. And I like the, the partnership idea there too, because it's bringing more people in and, and yeah, it's, it's one of those things. If you're not getting, I think you mentioned, you know, the member participation. Well, if you're doing a service project that you're not getting much participation, you may want to think about what do my members at least really want to do because doing something that they want to do, they're going to tell more people about it too. So yeah, good thought there. Um, all right. Now, I think I'm going to turn it over to you to introduce the next one. Yeah. Yeah. So, <laughs> okay, Kyle. So, we're going to talk next about the fundraising and social events, which I think you like to do both of those um, and how that impacts um, when people look at us. And so, yeah, t talk about that a little bit on the creating the positive perception in our clubs for that. Well, I, th I think it's twofold. I mean, it, you know, we want to engage our members and, and one of the whole parts of Rotary is fellowship. And if we're engaging our members, we need to give them reasons to interact with each other and get to know each other outside of just a meeting. And that's where social events are so important uh, and fundraisers for that matter. Finding events that our members want to attend that they want to put in the work for, for fundraisers, but that they want to attend, they want to invite their, their uh, significant others, their families to for social events, because, you know, a social event at, in the evening is taking time away from something else they'd be doing. So we have to make sure it's worthwhile for them to give up their time and say, hey, honey or junior or whomever, let's go to this. It's going to be fun and make sure it's fun for the significant other too, because if they're not having any fun, chances of you going a second time is probably pretty minimal. Um, so, so having events that are engaging both from the social event side and the fundraising side of things um, is, is going to help increase member participation, member satisfaction. And then from a fundraising perspective, make sure that you are finding events that are um, engaging for the community as well. So it's not just your own members giving that money. Awesome. Nope. Um, so, I mean, you kind of segued into this a little bit, but what are a couple of things that you would suggest um, that we all consider to make sure when we are having those appealing events for our members and our attendees? Well, I think, I, I think and it goes back to like what you were talking about with projects and, and, and what we've been talking about before. A common theme is asking our members what they want. Um, you know, if you are, you want to make sure you're having enough social events that they're appealing to everybody. Um, and it's not just, well, we're going to do this in one quarter or, you know, twice a year. And if you can't make it, can't make it. Well, that, that makes you not feel very good about things or having a small group of people that only plan social events that they like without thinking about the whole, um, that's not going to get everybody attending either. And, and the same thing with fundraising events, figure out what fits in your community and, and, uh, and what are, what are interesting to your members and do things there. And, and we have to remember, even in the promotion of these things, we have to promote it as fun. It's not a, uh, it's not just, Hey, come to whatever. No, you, you want to come because of the, you know, it's going to be fun and then have, attendees afterwards 
talk about um, how much fun they had there because then the people that didn't go, it's going to be a little bit of fear of missing out. Yep. Nope. I fully agree there. So what are some good and bad examples that you've seen at clubs and their fundraisers and social events that have gone good and bad? Well, I think, I, I think from a social event perspective, and I got a kick out of this, uh, a number of years ago, we had a, a president in our club. Um, uh, we've had enough presidents that I don't think I'm going to get in trouble by naming it, naming a club there. But uh, he was one of those that would make the announcement. He would tell you what the next person was going to be announcing um, from an announcement perspective. And he said, you know, so-and-so is going to come up and talk about that district meeting. Totally downplayed it. I mean, this was the district conference. This is a two and a half day event that many of us <laughs> have been around Rotary enough. You know, there's a lot of effort that goes into district conferences and they're a lot of fun too. And he just says, uh, Kyle's going to talk about that district meeting. Well, what's the perception there? The perception is, well, that doesn't mean anything, and, and you're not going to have as many people go. Um, from a fundraising perspective, uh, a number of years ago, I was doing a, a fundraising breakout at one of the president-elect training, and um, before, I, before I started, uh, this guy from a club was just bad-mouthing their rose sale and talking about how nobody in the club – really was engaged and only like 30% of their membership actually sold any roses and da 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 da, da. Um, Well, that's not a great event. Now, the funny part was later on when I said, so what are good things about your fundraisers? And he raised his hand and said, everybody loves roses. And I went, do they? Because you just told me 30% of your club members are the only ones active. Well, how is that going to, uh, to appeal to a greater audience? Um, so things like that, making sure that that you are asking it and, and, and being okay with building on an event. Um, you know, and, and we've talked plenty about fundraising, so I don't really want to go there, but, but build over time and always look at, well, okay, how could we have made that better? And, and the other part, and I learned this when I was our club president, we did a monthly 501 club, meet at 501 at a bar once a week or once a month for just everybody getting together socially. And about 20 of our 70 members would come and it was starting to really irritate me uh, because the other 50 weren't there. And I, I finally shifted. I said, you know what? I'm not going to worry about who's not here. I'm going to worry about making sure the people that are here have a good experience. And that's when I started making sure that the next week would have somebody that was in attendance talk about how much fun they had in hopes of driving that up. And we did have more success, but it was it was creating enough ways to get people engaged so they could get to know each other and, uh, and like being around each other. Awesome. No, those are all really good points. So Kyle, I'm going to turn it back over to you. Cool. Thank you. So our last section is somewhat all encompassing and that's the community involvement and profile of our membership. And we'll bring Patrick back to talk about this for a few minutes. So Patrick, how, how can the membership profile of a club affect the perception a community has of a club and why is this important? Really important because you want to reflect your community, right? You want to make sure that if I walk into your club, I'm seeing the community that you're serving. So again, go back to your club as that visitor, that guest. That's one of the best tools you can take away today because you're going to be able to hear everything we've talked about and you're going to see the little spots, the, the successes and some of the things you can work on and ask yourself, does my club reflect what my community looks like and is and wants to be. Um, also, what are your members? Do you have the powers that be of your community? Not only just the political powers that be, but the best teachers, the best entrepreneurs, the best sanitation, the best cooks, chefs. You want the chefs, right, Gretchen? You want that food to be good. But seriously, get the people in your community excited so that they want to be part of the center service of their community. And that in the next year, you might already have this in your club, especially the smaller communities, but even the big, big, big cities like Chicago, Austin, Minneapolis, et cetera, uh, Fort Worth. I see John here. It's like, literally you can, you can make sure that even in your little neck of the woods in your community, in a big city reflects the neighborhood that you're in, that you're serving. So I hope that answered the question. It's really important. Absolutely. Absolutely. It does. Um, and, uh, Oh, 
I I'm, lost my, there's my, okay. this yep. is a page break on the script there. And I, would, I <laughs> got confused. So if we want our membership to help elevate the perception we have, what are some things we should consider? Well, here's, here's a big kicker that I think a lot of rotary clubs, when they hear it, you see the the light bulbs going off uh, in everyone's minds. Are your, are your projects in your community that you've been doing for year after year after year still relevant to the community? This is one of those tough questions you have to, you know, sit back and ask. I'll use an example, and this is no offense to anyone that does this project. It's just an easy example. Imagine you've been doing uh, dig, dig, uh, dictionaries for a long time, like for years and years and years and years, and the local school district just doesn't have the heart to tell you, hey, we've got tons of them already, but thank you so much. Instead, they just take it, they smile, they say thank you. What if you went to the school district or went to your community projects and asked the community, hey, guys, does this still work or what else is going on? What do we need to, to help fulfill? What do we need to, to, to work on to make sure the community is strong? When the community hears that you're willing to adapt and improv and make things happen, which is what Rotary is all about, it will be the best public image you have in the end that we've talked about. Because when the community walks around and says, hey, the Rotary Club of X, Y, and Z, they solve the problems of the community. They're there for us in times of triumph and tragedy. They're there. That is going to be something that all innovators in the community want to be a part of that center of service. So I really think, ask yourself those questions. What are the projects that we're doing in the community? Are they relevant today? And what can we do to step it up and make sure that we're fulfilling the needs of the community? Uh, so, and also if you are struggling with the fact that some of your members in the community or some of the community is not reflective in your club, go out to them and say, hey, we want to work with you guys. What do you need in the community? What are your things? What are your passions? Go work a project with the community that is a part of a part of the part of the community that you don't have represented. I guarantee they'll want to come back for more. Also, ask them to come speak at your club as a program and just say, hey, talk to us. Who are you? What are you about? And how can we start being connected more? It works. This stuff works. It's not hard. And I think I think that's a very good point because it's it's not just in like you said the center of the service in your community and and going out and asking them hey what can we do to help it's not only going to give your club more ideas where you can be more relevant in the community but it's also positioning yourselves as the organization that others will come to when now all of a sudden they have a new need in the community and they'll go gosh who can help us the Rotary Club can. And they'll start proactively reaching out because they have that positive perception going, you know, they came to us and asked us proactively. Now, now we feel comfortable going to them because you've already opened that door. Um, do have one question that I need to go off script here a little bit. You said the light bulb going off and Pete oh, Bosch asked in the chat, why does that, why does a light bulb going off and going on mean the same thing? But we can, we can I have no idea. Yeah, there you go. Okay. Good, <laughs> good answer on it's that in one. My he teleprompter. Me, I just read what's in my teleprompter. No, okay. He, he also um, told me to ignore that question. And I said, I didn't want to. Um, so can you give an example or two that you've seen that have led to good and bad perceptions of a club in a community? Well, the clubs that like, I, I think we could wrap it up by just repeating what we just said. It really is uh, so simple. If you go out into the community and you meet them where they are and you meet them where they need help and they need support and they need some inspiration, your club is going to shine. It's going to be what Rotary is. We are the number one service organization on the planet. We are transforming the world. And People don't know that in North America. So the more we share the great work we're doing in our communities, the better off the community is going to be because they're going to know the truth. So get out there, get dirty with the community, get your hands wet. That's the good part. The bad part is the clubs that sit back and say, well, I don't need to go out there. The community should come to me. I've been doing things for years. I've been writing checks for years. We can just sit here, have lunch or have breakfast or have a happy hour. And the community that comes, comes. And the ones that don't, don't matter. Well, that is, a, that is a formula for a dying club. Uh, that is a club that will fall at some point. So I strongly recommend it. If you have that in your club, get it out of there. Because at the end of the day, <laughs> excuse me, at the end of the day, uh, it's about who's involved in the community is what matters. And I'll, I'll leave with this. <laughs> Sorry, here comes my cough. Ask your club too, when it comes to community involvement, ask your members through a private, you know, anonymous survey, 
what are the community involvement projects they care about? Because a lot of times, a lot of clubs will just go, this is what we're doing this year because I'm president. It's like, no, wait a minute. What do we want to do? Because it strengthens the heartbeat of your club and it connects you with the community. And it's a, it's a kumbaya. It's a kumbaya. So uh, again, these are simple things that work. All of the things we've talked about today have been proven. They've been tested for years. And that's why we wanted to share them with you today. Absolutely. Thanks, Patrick. And to piggyback on that, you know, it's not just this webinar, but it's other webinars that we've talked about different things from a deep dive perspective or otherwise. Um, we talk about fundraisers. Well, uh, in March, uh, Amber Scarborough, who couldn't be here, and I, uh, we, we did 45 minutes on, on effective fundraising and everything that you can go back and watch that video on our, dis or on our uh, public image resource library webpage, which we'll send a link on. And uh, I think it was in January or February, we, we uh, spent 15 or 20 minutes talking with Alex Johnson about those service projects in the community and how that can lead directly to bringing more members into the club because and Alex is here today, but uh, it, it's a great way to promote your club to the community.